All right, hello everyone. Welcome to ACOE's Connected Seasonal Pickling. I'm Leanne, I'm the events programmer for the AC Hub. We are joined today by Sarah of Top Shelf Preserves. ACOE. Hey guys. ACOE's Connected is a new online event series that keeps our entire Algonquin College community connected. Before we get started, we're gonna share a couple of housekeeping items. We kindly ask you to keep your microphone muted during the presentation. However, we encourage you to keep your camera on for some face-to-face -face time. Along the bottom of the screen, you will find a button entitled chat. When you select this option, a pop-up window appears on the right-hand side of your screen. Following Sarah's presentation, we welcome you to ask questions in one of two ways. The first is to type your question in the chat tab and I will read it out loud on your behalf. And the second is to open the participants tab also along the bottom of the screen and select the raise hand function. This will raise your virtual hand and I will call upon you to unmute your microphone and ask your question live. So this question period will take place following Sarah's presentation. However, we will accept topical questions throughout her presentation via the chat. So to kick off today's event, we would like everyone to now open the chat tab along the bottom of the screen. In a couple of seconds, I'm gonna give everyone a fun question to answer and we'd like everyone to answer the question by typing in the chat, but please wait to press send until we say so because we're all gonna send our answers at the same time. So the question is, what is your favorite pickled or preserved food or herb? So go ahead and type that in the chat. Okay, and I'm going to count down from three and we're all gonna send our answers at the same time. Three, two, one, send. I see lots of pickles. Awesome, cucumbers. Awesome, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing your answers. Our AC Always Connected events will always start with an engaging question. So now we would like to welcome Sarah, who started Top Shelf Preserves in 2013 after a decade of cooking in professional kitchens. She created a line of bold pickles and preserves and soon realized she had a real knack for the craft. Her unique and delicious pickles and preserves fit the bill whenever you desire a handcrafted touch. Whether it's an elevated brunch, an inspired cocktail, a cheese or charcuterie board, or a late night snack right from the fridge, Top Shelf Preserves is proudly handmade in Ottawa. So Sarah, over to you to share your expertise on seasonal pickling. Thank you, Leanne. Thanks for having me. Um, hey guys, I'm tuning in from work. Um, I work at a space called Pro Kitchen and we are located in the east end of Ottawa in the Cantec Business Park. So this is where we do all our preserving and all our business operations and it is a shared kitchen. So my basemates have generously uh, encouraged me to take this opportunity and use our really lovely kitchen. So behind us you'll just see this is where we cook everything and this is our little workspace. Um, so today I'm really excited to share uh, my preserving knowledge with you guys and I kind of just wanted to get started by stimulating like a bit of a discussion about what preserving is and what the goals of preserving are. Um, I know the first thing a lot of people will think about is um, shelf stable pickles that have been water bath canned. So old fashioned uh, preserving methods like is anyone familiar with that, can I see any nodding or shaking of the head? Yeah. So um, we only have an hour today and I wanted to get a chance to chat with you guys. So I'm not gonna walk you through water bath canning. Um, I'm happy to share some tips and information, especially if you guys have questions for the Q&A section at the end. Um, but what I want to do is get you guys thinking about preserving and what preserving is and some really, uh, simple ways that we can extend the life of food, some simple ways that we can keep food fresh, um, and some ways to think outside uh, of just doing water bath canning. Um, so I saw that a lot of you guys uh, said that you love dill pickles, pickled beets, pickled beans, onions. I love all those things, radish, kimchi, eggplant, so lots of different ways to arrive at those um, different types of pickled things. Um, so I would love to uh, show you guys some of the herbs that I brought in because the theme of the class is uh, seasonal vegetables and herbs. 
and I will just grab them. So I have um, some oregano. I've got some fresh dill leaves. I have some uh, garden thyme. A little, some of it is flowering. And uh, lots of nice fresh aromatic basil. So I don't know about you guys, but I think um, dried herbs have a bit of a bad rap. Like I think it's a really uh, great way to preserve a good um, vibrant flavor uh, is just through drying. And I think drying is a method that we often don't think of when we think of preserving. Um, you can also make dried mushrooms, uh, smoked and dried peppers. Um, and then these things you can use to season your food in preserves. You can also use them in your cooking. So for example, the oregano here, um, I dried just by uh, washing the herbs thoroughly, drying them in a salad spinner, and then placing them on a tray to just dry them simply. And you'll see here, I have some dried um, thyme that I simply wash the herbs, put them on a tray, let them dry in a cool place undisturbed. And now I've got this really um, fragrant and fresh uh, dried herb, which I will basically just put into an airtight bag or into a jar, uh, seal it and keep, and it will stay really fresh for at least a year. I also have some dried oregano that I prepared last summer. So once it's dried, it kind of looks like this. And this is an awesome uh, flavor. Like I actually prefer the flavor of the oregano as a dried herb because I find it's got a stronger taste, a nice like almost lemony uh, taste. And then this is awesome in pickled carrots. Um, it's really, really good if you're doing pickled eggplant where you're, um, you wanna add some like herbaceous notes to a really simple clean pickle. So I think herbs can sometimes be overlooked. We're kind of just used to having them around fresh um, but I think dried, you can really get a lot of mileage out of them. So I'm happy to chat more about um, drying herbs. And one thing I read that I thought was really interesting is that if you're able to access um, picking your own fresh herbs, that if you pick them in the morning, they have a stronger um, aroma because the essential oils are more prominent uh, early in the morning. So I try to pick the herbs early in the morning and then when I'm picking them I try to pick them to encourage the plants to grow um, in a bushy way so I'm not I'm an amateur gardener but uh, it's it's good to always kind of be out there keeping an eye on stuff making sure it's not bolting because you'll see some of them are flowering which is really cute and great for the bees so I always try and leave some of them flowering um, but I like to pick them for preserving before they flower because once they start to flower, um, the actual herbs themselves don't have as much flavor. And then these herbs are all great for some of the pickles that you guys mentioned. Like obviously dill is critically important for our favorite dill pickles. And um, I also love to season my pickles with lots of different spices. So I actually find dill seed has a much stronger uh, aroma and flavor of dill than the dill weed itself. Um, and when I make dill pickles or pickled beans with dill, I like to add both because I think they really um, have different aspects of the dill flavor. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, and of course, there's lots of delicious flavorings you can use for your pickles. I have like a pickling blend of loads of different spices. I'm not sure how you can see that this has cinnamon and allspice, coriander, bay leaves, um, cloves, chili flakes, dill, mustard, all kinds of things and I really like making my own pickling blend because it means that any pickle that I use it in kind of has my own signature uh, flavor 
Um, and then I also love black peppercorns for pickling, um, but that's something you want to use sparingly. So certain herbs and spices, I think you can use a heavy hand. And for other ones, um, they can kind of overpower what you're making. So I want to help you guys have some confidence to use pickling as a method, not just to extend the life of your food, but also to season it and kind of make it um, to experience different aspects of the food. Um, so, and then for storing your uh, fresh leafy greens, herbs, things like that, um, in order, so this dill is a little limp, it's just kind of been sitting around. Um, a great way that I want to share, um, that I kind of just learned from working in kitchens, is that once you get your vegetables from the farmer's market, let's say, um, or your garden, if you're so fortunate, you can um, prepare them by just cutting the stems or whatever, washing them, and then if you place them into a container, so this can be a Ziploc bag, um, or it can be a Tupperware container like this. This is a, a Cambro container for, that's used in restaurants. And all I have in the bottom here is just a dry, clean kitchen towel. Um, what I love about this is that it keeps your greens fresh, it absorbs any excess moisture, and keeping them in the fridge like this, it really keeps them crisp, um, and it keeps a lot of the flavor intact. This is also great if you need to refresh um, something that's gone limp. So, for example, the, the dill that I mentioned earlier, if you just put this in a bowl with a bit of cool water or even ice water, the cells in the um, vegetable will actually just suck up that water and re-plump, and then you can use this method where you put a paper towel or a clean kitchen towel, um, like for example, inside just a standard um, plastic bag. So you could put your wash herbs right into here with your um, cloth or ideally for something smaller like this, you could even use paper towel. And then this will keep your herbs fresh for at least a week. Um, so I love to do this if I buy a really big amount of basil or something at the market. So you end up with something like this. Um, and in fact, you can even poke holes in the bag. And what that does is it encourages the air to continue to circulate. Um, so that if there is condensation in the bag, you've got your rag in there to soak it up, but you also have some air flowing through the bag and that'll really help keep your herbs fresh. I especially find for tender greens, this is super useful. Um, so I just thought I'd share that, um, just something I kind of picked up from working in kitchens and I thought it's really um, uh, like a bit of a tangent, but I think when we think of food preserving, we should think about extending the freshness of the food that we use. So, I mean, using fresh is always preferable. Um, of course, like there's nothing like a dill pickle. So there's also always a place for canning and there's also lots of ways to arrive at that conclusion um, other than water bath pickling. So there's also um, quick pickling and basically quick pickling is a great uh, way to try out different flavors, different combinations of herbs, spices, different ratios, um, even just different ratios of salt uh, based on your preference. So if you're making your own pickles, you can customize them to exactly how you like them. So uh, quick pickling is something I'll demonstrate for you guys today. It's super, super simple. It just kind of involves getting your produce together, preparing it, and then pouring hot pickling brine over top. So the brine I'm gonna to use today is two parts vinegar to one part water, and I'm using white vinegar. Um, I really like white vinegar because the flavor of the vegetables and the seasonings that you're using is gonna come through in a very clean way. Um, cider vinegar is delicious as well for pickling and it's really traditional uh, in something like pickled beets um, and in all kinds of other farmhouse type pickles, uh, pickled onions. 
There's also other um, vinegars you can use. So I just brought a few that I like. They're all really different. Um, I've got just a red wine vinegar, a rice wine vinegar, and this is a champagne vinegar. So these are three um, vinegars that are really, really diverse, like have really different flavors. And so these can work, uh, really change the flavor of whatever you're pickling. Um, but like I said, I really like using white vinegar. I think it's got a little bit of a bad rap. It really lets you, the flavors of your uh, produce shine through. And what you can also do is, is do part white vinegar and part, say, red wine, rice, or champagne to kind of add complement to that uh, flavor. So another method um, that I'd love to uh, introduce you guys to, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, fermentation. So again, we only have an hour, so I'm giving you guys more of an overview than a full demonstration. But um, salt writing has been really fun to experiment with because sometimes the results are not uh, always what I would expect. Like I find fermenting can bring out some really interesting qualities in the ingredients that we're using and including the herbs and spices that you're using to flavor. So to do a really, really basic ferment, um, you can make a pickle brine with, um, I, I prepped one here with some coarse salt. And I should back up and have a little chat about salt. Um, see if you can see, these are nice coarse granules of salt. So this is also known as pickling salt. And this is great because it doesn't have any um, minerals that are going to cloud up your pickle bread. Another great choice for pickling is sea salt. So sea salt comes in a whole variety of types. Some is fine, some is more coarse, some is unrefined, um, some will definitely leave a bit of sediment, um, and some have more mineral flavors that can be really interesting. Uh, for most of my recipes I like to use a coarse salt. It's really consistent. A lot of people use kosher salt. And so when you're using your, when you're writing down your recipes, you want to make sure that you are making a note of what type of salt you're using because um, using a half a cup of coarse salt will be different than using half a cup of kosher. So kosher salt will be a bit less salty. Um, so for this brine, I combined three tablespoons of coarse salt, and you could use sea salt or any other kind. I would avoid using table salt because it has added iodine. And then I've just added a liter of water. So I basically melted the salt down in the water just by using warm water. And again, the ratio that I used was three tablespoons of salt to one liter of water. And that's something you can play around with. Like the uh, ratio of salt will kind of change the fermenting process. But this is cool because it, in this type of pickle, instead of getting the instant results that you get from doing a quick pickle, this actually takes days, weeks, or even months to yield a result, um, but you can kind of check in on it as it's going, keep an eye on it. So what I'm gonna do is prepare a bunch of veggies, pack them into jars, and just show you how I go about um, doing those two different methods. And I would love to like take a little break and just ask if anyone has um, any questions or wants any clarification, because I just covered tons of, uh, of material in about 10 minutes. So um, what, or what are you guys thinking? Are you, is this interesting? What's the, have you heard of fermenting before? Um, have you done quick pickling? Is it intimidating to think about doing these things? Because uh, I know a lot of people are nervous to try fermenting or pickling because they're scared they're going to um, like make something that could be potentially harmful. So there's a couple questions in the chat. The first one is, um, when you dry mushrooms, do you slice them first? Um, yeah, that's a great question. That's something I haven't um, done myself, but I know that you can definitely have success doing sliced or whole mushrooms. 
Um, and then to dry them, uh, you can use a food dehydrator. So a food dehydrator is usually um, something that you plug into the wall and uses a little bit of electricity uh, to basically bring things up to a warm temperature, uh, but in a uh, dry environment. And then it just slowly dries them out. So you can set it on different temperature settings. Uh, so if you want a mushroom that's more, that's dried, but it still has some texture, you can dry it at a different temperature. And if you want something that's more, um, like very dry that you could pulverize into a powder, say to mix with malted salt to make like a mushroom salt, you may want to dry it a bit more. Um, and I think uh, slicing versus keeping them whole will also affect the texture in your final product. So I would say definitely try doing both ways and see what works for you and what you like. Awesome, thank you. The next question we have is, is there a trick to keeping the veggies crunchy when you pickle them? Yeah, um, so I've got a few different types of vegetables. Um, so I brought today some garlic scapes and the garlic scapes are kind of like a sturdy vegetable. So when you go to quick pickle them, they will stay crunchy because they're already, they have a lot of um, it's kind of integrity to them. Um, Whereas something a bit more tender, like these green onions, um, or even these beans, uh, if you're cooking them a long time in the liquid, they may be, uh, become softened. So for quick pickling, you can either put your vegetables in your jar and pour the hot brine over. That's great for um, vegetables that are more prone to becoming soft. Uh, so like onions um, or mushrooms, like vegetables that are more tender and you don't want to overcook. And then for other vegetables like say these carrots, um, cabbage, the garlic scapes, these are more sturdy. You could actually cook these in a pot with your pickling brine and then taste them for doneness. So you can cook them to the level that you prefer. Um, so for example, when we make pickled beets, we cook them first because we like them to be a bit of a softer texture. But for our carrots, we will um, pack them wrong because we like them really crunchy. So again, that's something you can kind of experiment with. And then keeping veggies crunchy when pickling, um, there's a lot of things you can do. Like for example, you can, uh, when you're making bread and butter pickles or any kind of sliced uh, mixed pickles, you can combine your vegetables with salt and ice uh, and then you use physical weight to weigh them down um, and then that squishes water content out of your pickles or out of your vegetables so that when you go to pickle them some of the water has been removed um, so another thing you can do is for your brine instead of doing two parts vinegar to one part water you could omit the water because the vegetables are already high in water content. Um, it just depends how you like the taste of that and how uh, much vinegar you're adding to your mixture. So um, if your jar is filled to the very top and it's tightly packed um, and you pour your vinegar on, then it's different than if you only fill a jar halfway and it's not tightly packed. You might want to add more water to that. But um, the question of how to keep pickles crisp is kind of an age old question and a lot of it comes down to the ingredients themselves. You absolutely, it's just not worth it to try preserving and pickling vegetables that aren't fresh. Um, you definitely want to use fresh, good quality produce because it's a lot of work uh, to do the preserves and chances are if something is not super fresh now, it's not going to be improved by preserving. So that can sometimes be hard if you've overbought something or you have something you want to save. Pickling and jamming is not always the best move for that. You may want to like make a soup or, or blanch it and freeze it or find another way to preserve it or to, sorry not to preserve it but to actually just use it up. So maybe I, I wouldn't blanch and freeze a passive vegetable. 
Um, and when it comes to crispness and, and cucumber pickles, you really want to be pickling them the day that they're picked. Um, vegetables are still alive after they're picked. There's still stuff going on in them. Um, so if you don't use those uh, vegetables that are highly perishable um, quickly, they will start to break down and the enzymes will start to soften the vegetables. So my advice is when you do decide to go ahead and make your dill pickles or your your pickled eggplant or whatever it is that you want to you know make a whole lot of you definitely want to make sure that the quality is fresh if you have a cucumber you can stick your thumb onto the end and see if it's firm that's usually what i do to make sure that our cucumbers are fresh enough um, and then yeah salt and also sugar can help with crispness so for example, like with our bread and butter pickles, which are sliced cucumber and onion pickles, um, the brine that we use for those has no water added. We remove a lot of water from the cucumbers and then we add um, sugar to the brine, which also helps uh, create a crisp uh, texture. But of course there's a flavor as well. So if you're not a fan of sweet pickles, uh, it's hard to change anyone's mind about that. So <laughs> you're kind of on your own. What awesome. size cucumber? Um, and then I just saw someone asked, uh, Michelle, what size cucumber do you recommend? Um, that is really up to you. Like I, the smaller, the, the crunchier generally. Um, but if you have really nice fresh, larger cucumbers, you can, like I said, slice them, squeeze the water out, you can ice them. The ice will help to firm up the cell walls, kind of like what I was talking about earlier, to refresh herbs, you can put them in cool water with a bit of ice. Um, and if you're using larger cucumbers, you can also make, um, uh, you can slice them or you can make them into spears. And those are often crispy. A lot of people also use, um, you can buy something called pickle crisp, uh, which is a natural compound that you can add. It's almost like a salt. And then you can add that to your pickles to make them crispy. But um, based on my trials using that, I found the most important thing for crispy is just to use really, really fresh, uh, super fresh pickles. I also have a superstition that adding mustard seed um, helps keep pickles fresh. I don't know if that's true, but it seems to be um, in my experience. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. The next two questions are very similar. The first one being, do you have to use warm water? And the second one being, is the definition of quick pickling just pouring hot brine over cold contents in a cold jar? Um, so for quick pickling, Quick pickling, I think, is basically just distinguishes itself from water bath pickling. So just to like rewind, um, water bath pickling is mostly what I do at Top Shelf Preserves. We do have a couple of fermented products, but almost everything that we make is put into a jar and then put into a boiling water bath for a certain amount of time based on the contents of that jar. We use tested recipes to make sure that we are um, doing things up to protocol. And then when those jars come out of the water bath canner, we inspect the seals to make sure that they are uh, intact. And then we uh, can store them on the shelf for several years. So um, the difference with quick pickling is that it's not meant for shelf stable storage. So for quick pickling, it could be as simple as chopping veggies, putting them in a, in a jar and pouring hot brine over, um, or it could be adding those vegetables to a pot and adding your brine to the pot and cooking the brine into the vegetables. Um, then that would be like a hot pack. So if you're cooking the vegetables in the brine, or if you're blanching the vegetables and, in water and then putting them in the brine, um, Sometimes that works better for more dense vegetables like carrots because they'll uh, soak up more of the flavor of the pickle brine. They'll be sort of ready, like they, they will have absorbed those flavors quicker than if you just pour the brine over, let it cool, put it in your fridge. Um, so one example I have just, I was going through my fridge earlier, 
we did a, a pickling course with Red Door Provisions um, back in the winter. And my challenge was to create um, seasonal pickles. So in the winter, there's not a lot that's around other than cabbage and root vegetables. We were able to get these purple uh, daikon. And so you can see it here. A lot of the color has faded in the last couple months, but they still taste delicious and crispy. And these are just um, matchstick cut daikon, which is like a, a root vegetable that's related to the radish. And we just cut them quickly and we poured over the brine, the simple brine of two parts vinegar, one part water, added a little bit of sugar to sweeten it. And these are still really fresh. So these we didn't process, we didn't cook them in the brine. We just had a jar filled with matchstick cut veggies, poured the brine on top, let it cool. And we've still got these great um, pickles that are quite delicious actually, it's hard not to eat right now. Um, and then the other question about the temperature of the water. Um, so if you're making a, a pickle brine and you want to pour the water over the veggies, you're going to want to do that with hot water because the heat will, will kind of soften uh, some of the vegetables and help them to soak up the seasoning, the salt, the vinegar. And, um, and then if you're doing a fermented brine, like if you're doing a salt brine pickle, uh, the reason I use warm water is just to dissolve the salt. Um, so you can use warm water and then let it cool is basically what I would do uh, so that you can make sure the salt is fully dissolved, but then you don't want to be pouring hot water onto your vegetables. It's more of a raw process. And then I see someone asks about the pink color of the daikon. These were um, purple uh, daikon radish that I picked up from Juniper Farm at the Lansdowne Farmer's Market. So when we pickled them, they turned pink and it was kind of a surprise because basically the outer skin of the vegetable is, is kind of like a light lavender purple color and the inside is white. So this was kind of um, a fun discovery when we made them. Um, and then also I should mention uh, my basic brine of two to one vinegar to water. Uh, you'll also want to salt the vegetables for uh, just for the seasoning effect. Like if you like things salty, like dill pickles usually are, are heavily seasoned, um, then you'll, you can just add your salt to taste for quick pickling. Um, salt will also preserve, help to preserve uh, your pickles a bit longer, but a lot of people are on those salt diets. You can omit it and, and still make a really tasty pickle. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. There is a question here about safety. Um, there's someone who's been nervous about fermenting because of the safety. Is there any tips to help minimize those fears? Yeah. Um, oh, hi, Christy. <laughs> um, I know you're a fan of our pickled turnips, um, which are fermented. So for safety, um, when you're salt brining, you will basically pour your, put your vegetables, your seasonings, and your salt brine together. And the most important thing that you're going to want to do is to ensure that those vegetables are fully submerged. So one thing that will spoil food is um, exposure to the air. So a lot of what we're doing in preserving is limiting that exposure. So in water bath canning, that's one of the ways that we're preserving the food is by hermetically sealing a jar and sucking the air out. When you're making a ferment, one thing you can do is you can, um, if you have a fermenting vessel, a lot of them come with a weight. So a fermenting vessel could be a, a pickling crock or some kind of earthen, uh, earthenware or ceramic vessel. You put all your veggies and things inside or your cucumbers and your garlic you pour your salt brine on top and then on top you can put something heavy that will hold down all the cucumbers so that on the top you'll just have the, the brine floating maybe a few of the spices will pop up but all the vegetables will be submerged that's really important um, you can also use uh, I've used a Ziploc bag filled with brine uh, to weigh down ferments so that that way the vegetables remain under the liquid of the brine. 
or under the liquid of their own juice in the case if you're making um, something like sauerkraut um, where you're not necessarily adding a brine you're just adding salt to your vegetables and the, and the vegetable juice that's naturally occurring in the vegetable um, and so you can make you can take a plastic bag fill it with brine so that if it breaks it's not going to ruin your um, ferment and then another thing that you can do is you can use like so the reason that um, jars have this shape this is called the shoulder is so that when you're packing things inside them uh, they'll, they can naturally stay uh, under the lip and so then if you've got the jar filled with veggies to here and then you've got the brine up to here then the vegetables are still uh, not touching the air. So that's really important. Um, and then with fermenting, like that's its whole own course. You definitely want to do some research and familiarize yourself with it. But it's pretty simple and it's one of those things where you can kind of trust your nose. So if something smells really gross, probably something's gone wrong and, and bacteria has been introduced, like a bacteria that you don't want has been introduced to your ferment. Um, so for any of this kind of stuff for preserving, whether you're quick pickling or canning, especially if you're canning, but if you're even if you're quick pickling, one thing you can do to keep food from spoiling is to make sure everything is clean and sterile. So that means washing with soap and water, um, and if you want to take an extra step, you can uh, clean it with a chemical sanitizer. That's what we do because the Ottawa Health Department uh, wants to make sure everything's sanitary. So we use just like a normal kitchen sanitizing spray on all our surfaces, on our knives, on our um, jars. But uh, at home, you could also run them through a high temperature dishwasher so that the temperature could kill any potential microorganisms. You can also Put the jars directly in a pot of boiling water. This can be kind of uh, dangerous, so you want to make sure that you're careful, but that will make sure that your jar is completely sterile. And you can also glove up your hands to make sure you're not introducing any microorganisms that you don't want in your ferment. Um, but Christy, if you have more questions about fermenting, I'd, I'd be happy to um, resume the conversation. Maybe we can do a Q&A over Instagram next week um, if you get something started and want a bit of advice because that's a really fun project to get into and it kind of, I feel like it takes a lot of, because that fermenting process takes a lot of time, um, it's kind of a slow experience, you gain experience slowly <laughs> doing it. Also can recommend a couple of really great books like The Art of Fermentation by Alexander Katz super um, extremely informative book and really interesting to read so I highly recommend that it's called the art of fermentation and um, there's also some great resources resources online um, if you check out the food blog wellpreserved.ca um, Joel McCharles and Dana I can't remember her last name they uh, actually have a blog about how they made sauerkraut on their honeymoon while they were traveling. Um, so they're major uh, fermenting enthusiasts and have some really basic down to earth information on how to get started in fermenting and not to be overwhelmed. And so a lot of the stuff I learned about fermenting was through their blog and through the, the Sandra Katz books that I mentioned. Awesome, Sarah, thank you so much. Just being mindful of time, um, maybe we should get back to pickling and we'll do that demo. Yeah, and then there is a sure. couple more questions in the chat that we'll come back to after we see that demo of yours. Okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna start like prepping some veggies just to show you that I don't actually have a plan here. I just figured if I put all this stuff in front of me, we could come up with a really great pickle. So. I think um, I'll start with these carrots. I'm just gonna clean off my bore. All right, awesome. So I had some cilantro stems in the fridge. Um, that have a really lovely aroma and are still in really good shape. And so I didn't want to throw them out. 
but I've never tried fermenting with them. So I'm going to, my plan is to ferment some, to start fermenting these carrots with some cilantro, maybe a little bit of garlic. And um, normally I would peel carrots, but these carrots are just so tender that I think I'm gonna leave the peel on and because I haven't tried that before. And then when you're pickling, you can really cut any which way you like. So if you like your pickles, um, I think for these, I kind of want to try slicing them. Um, I'm just going to slice them into kind of basic coins. And I'm going to put in some of these green onions. And I really just want to demonstrate that you can just experiment. It's totally encouraged to do so. I don't know if you can see, but I'm just trying to pack them into this jar so that they're not floating around. And so this is going to be primarily a carrot pickle, but I would like to add some of these green onions because they've got a really nice fresh taste. So I think what I'll do for these, I'm just going to remove these kind of outer pieces that are less fresh looking. And I think I'm going to try and keep these onions whole and to see how they react to the fermenting. So I'm just going to shove these in. And I will just fill out the rest of the jar with three more. For this brine, I think I want to add some garlic. So I've got a little bit of peeled garlic here. It's going to go in. I love uh, fermented garlic. Like when we make fermented pickles, um, the little chunks of garlic have an awesome taste. Actually, maybe I'll add a couple extra. And I'm going to add a little bit of chili flakes. So I like spicy and I think carrots are delicious with spicy. I'm going to add a little bit of dill seed too. And what else do I have here? I've got some I've got these tops, or sorry, bottoms from green onions. So I'm going to add these two and just see how that works out. We're going to squish the stuff into the jar. And I'm just going to pour my salt brine on top. So just, uh, again, this was um, tablespoons of coarse salt, one liter of water. It was warm. Now it's kind of uh, blood temperature, like it's the same temperature as my skin. I'm going to just pour that in. Cool. So um, see if I can show this to you. So we do have a bit of um, floating on top. What I'm going to do is I will let these guys sit here today. And at the end of the day, I'll give them a stir. And then um, I'll make sure nothing's floating. So I'll probably add a few more carrots to kind of push them in. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of check on them when I come to work every day. Um, and when I say check on them, basically I mean 
pull a piece out, taste it, see if it's salty enough, see if it's starting to get a funky brine uh, flavor. Um, and so that's something that, you know, uh, I'll be happy to share with you guys on my Instagram. Sort of. And then these things don't always work out. It might taste weird with the cilantro stems or it might be too garlicky or the onions might go soft, but we don't know until we try. So this is a great opportunity to try something out and I think this is going to be really good. The carrots I picked up are really, really tasty and sweet and crisp. Um, and so then I will also do a quick uh, demo of doing a quick pickle. So for my quick pickle, I want to use that fresh dill I got from my garden. And so this dill has flowering heads and there's different stages of flowering. It's hard to tell from my camera here, but this is at the stage where they have a lot of pollen, like dill pollen, the yellow flowers. And it's got a really delicate flavor that is really tasty. Um, and then if you let the dill mature a little bit more, you'll get dill seed. So those flowers turn into the seeds. So I kind of like to have a bit of the pollen and then I like to have a bit of the dill seed to kind of get those different flavors of the dill. And with dill, I love to always add black pepper. Um, so for a jar this size, I'd maybe add, I wouldn't add more than five. That's me. I, I don't like an overpowering taste of pepper in my pickles. Um, and then maybe I'll add a little bit of mustard seed because of my superstition about crispness. I also just love the look of a mustard seed floating in the jars. And um, so I'm going to quickly strip this herbs and I think I will also add some garlic because it's delicious. And in fact, maybe I'll add a couple garlic scapes to this one as well. So to this one, I'm going to slice my garlic. That's just two cloves. That should be relatively garlicky for a one liter jar. I will add a couple of these garlic scapes. I'll just trim the tops and bottoms off of them. The scapes can be a bit woody on either end. So I just like to um, remove the flowering head here, just like at this point. Um, and then I also like to remove the end, which can be kind of tough, like. When you buy asparagus, you'll sometimes cut the end off. So it's kind of like that. Throw a few of these in. Also, of course, you want to make sure everything you're doing here has been washed. Um, so we, I washed all these in cool water this morning. Um, and then I've got these yellow beans. So when it comes to beans, you can pickle them however you like. Um, I usually cut the tops. So this is the top. I'll try and see if you can. Oops. This part of the bean, um, I usually just snip that off, but you don't need to. You could certainly leave that intact um, in the jar would make it your job a bit easier. Um, also opening up the top of the bean will make it so that the brine can go in there a bit quicker and make your pickles ready faster. And, uh, and then we're just gonna pack them in. So this is where it can get tricky. You definitely want to make sure you're not leaving too much air. Like you don't want to have too much void space because if you do, you'll just be making bean flavored pickle brine. And our goal is to make pickle flavored beans. So that means trying to have more beans than brine. So one way you can do that is by weighing out your beans to make sure that you have enough going in there. And another way is just trial and error, figure out what you like. And if your beans are not filling the jar totally, you can always uh, just change your brine recipe. You could add a bit more water. 
So I'm not going to bother chipping all these. I'll try pickling some of them with the tops intact. And I like to lie the jar down, as you can see there. I have packed thousands of jars of beans in the last seven years of running my business. It remains one of our best sellers. And there's really no way to speed up the process or make it any more automated uh, and still get the same great result that we have. So really it just takes a bit of time and effort and planning. And you know, one thing I always, always like to remind people of when I'm teaching about canning is just make sure you're giving yourself enough time to do this task and to do it properly and to enjoy it. You need to set yourself up, make sure you have all the ingredients you need, don't overwhelm yourself with too many projects at once. And, you know, then you can actually be more present in what you're doing and enjoying it. And I am a note taker. So all my recipes are scribbled on and amended and changed. And I really encourage you to do that. So you can even do that. Like once you've made your pickles, you can write it right on the jar, you know, right on top of the jar on the, on the front and green tape, what your pickle ratio was. You could do different tests. You could do one with apple cider vinegar, one with white vinegar. You could do one with, if you're doing your salt brines, you could do side by side tests of two tablespoons to a liter or one tablespoon to a liter or three tablespoons to a liter. See what you like and see what responds best for you. So yeah, as you can see, I do like keeping the jar on its side like this. It really just makes it easier to get more beans in. And I am just gonna continue to pack until I can't really fit them in anymore. And then one trick I really, um, this is valuable, so I hope you're listening. Butter knife um, is my favorite tool for packing because you can, gently manipulate the product that you're trying to pack so that you can fit more of them in. And then this jar is perfect for these beans because they're actually all basically going to fit under this, the shoulder that I mentioned. And so that's great because when we pour the brine in, they might float up to the top, but because they've got the shoulder, hopefully they'll stay submerged because they're not really going to pickle evenly if they're not submerged in the brine. Um, so I'm just still going to just shove a few more of these beans in. And then this is the same method you could use if you were going to water bath can them. Um, you just want to make sure that you are following all the water bath canning recommendations. So you'd have to make sure you're using a prop, like a, you'd want to make sure that your jars are sterile and you had a good understanding of the water bath canning process, which again, I'm happy to chat more about later in the Q and A. Um, and that's something that's readily available. You can find lots of information online. Um, and I will, um, Leanne, if you can remind me, I'll share a couple links that are really helpful for um, learning about pickling because they are trusted sources. So you guys want to make sure you're using good resources online if you're going to do water bath canning because it can be potentially harmful if you do it improperly. All right, so this jar is really quite full. I'd say there's probably maybe a pound of beans in here. And uh, I am just going to grab some of my brine, which is on the stove behind me. And I will, and I just unplugged into my headphones, so I'm going to leave for a moment and I'll be right back. While Sarah is grabbing her brine, I just want to mention that we have five minutes left in the event. Um, so if there were any questions that you had in the chat that did not get answered, we're going to post the link to Top Shelf Preserve's Instagram account. And we recommend reaching out to Sarah via Instagram. She's super happy to help and answer questions that way. Great, I'm back. 
I've got my brine here. So this is two to one vinegar to water. It also has salt and sugar to um, my preferred ratio. So that's something you'll want to play around with. And here I go. I'm just going to pour it right onto the beans. And if you have like a jar funnel, this is really helpful, but you can also try and free pour, which is what I'm going to do. Show off a little bit. All right, so you can see that the beans here are covered, and I'll just show you a top-down view. So that is really, really simple. Um, and then you want to look for air bubbles. So you see a few air bubbles are coming up. Um, and what you can do to encourage those air bubbles to come out is just agitate the vegetables inside or you can use the handy butter knife trick like so just try and remove as much air as possible and then I'm just going to cap this and uh, basically by tomorrow you'll have a lightly pickled uh, dill and garlic flavored bean and then if you kind of let them sit in your, you'll want to let this cool, like right now it's quite hot. And then you'll let that cool, have a taste of it uh, tomorrow, put it in the fridge, and then just continue to check on it. It will change over time. And if you find that the beans weren't quite um, pickled through, then you probably want to try water bathing because then they'll be cooked into the brine. You can also, instead of doing them this way, um, you could basically put all this stuff that I put into this jar just into a little saucepan, cook it on the stove until they're at your desired doneness or like a few stages away from your desired doneness because they'll continue to cook once the pan's off the heat. Um, and then you put it in a container. So it doesn't have to be glass. You could cook all these ingredients in a little pan um, and then once they're cooled, you can just put them in a plastic container. So lots of ways to do it. You don't have to buy any special equipment. You really don't have to. You can really preserve with very little. So that's what I would love to help uh, share information on because I think a lot of people get intimidated by all the steps that are involved. So I hope that was helpful. Um, just to show how really simple it is to throw these things together. Um, and I will, uh, in order for, so for the um, salt brine carrots that I did, what I'm gonna do is I wanna cover the jar so that no um, outside debris or let's say fruit flies or, or anything is gonna go in there but I want the brine to be able to let, because um, as it starts fermenting, it'll let off gas. So I want the gas to be able to escape. So you could use a clean kitchen towel and um, can you pass me an elastic band? Thank you. Um, so you could just use a kitchen towel and elastic band. I found this is a really simple method. It also keeps it out of the light, um, which is great. So this way, nothing can get in, but air can come out. If you have a lid on it, what you can have happen is um, a lot of activity, stuff foaming out, just depending on the ambient temperature of the room, the, the speed of the fermentation. Um, and then you'll just want to check on this daily to see if any mold is developing on top. You can skim it off. Um, but like I said earlier, if it smells gross, it's probably gone bad. It should smell delicious and make your mouth water. And it already does, actually. I, it smells almost like a, like a soup broth with all the, uh, the cilantro aroma. It's really quite strong, actually. It's really nice. So I'm very excited to check these out tomorrow. And, uh, and then, yeah, these beans will be super yummy and crispy. And you can kind of see that they've started to cook. Um, it's hard to tell with the low resolution camera that I have, but um, the beans are starting to turn a darker color. So the heat has started to cook them and the vinegar brine is gonna penetrate 
uh, the beans and all. These are going to be really tasty. Um, so I'm excited to share that with you guys. If you tune into my Instagram next week, I'll be happy to start sharing some of that. Um, wow, so it's already almost time to go, I think. I certainly am glad that Leanne uh, encouraged me to do the demo because <laughs> otherwise we would have missed out on seeing that part. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. This has been great today. Thank you for doing those two demos for us. We have posted your Instagram link in the chat and we'll post it one more time for anyone that wants to follow along to see how that carrot brine and those pickled beans turn out. But also if your question was missed today because we ran out of time, please message Top Shelf Preserves on Instagram. Sarah is super awesome and she will absolutely get back to you with those last questions. So Thanks. thank you again. Um, and all of her website and Facebook has been posted in the chat now as well. So give her a follow on everything. And on behalf of the AC Hub, we want to give all attendees a huge thank you for participating in today's AC Always Connected virtual event. If you're interested in rewatching recordings from this event, uh, it'll be posted later on this week or our other past events. A link will be posted in the chat now. And our next AC Always Connected virtual event is Taco Tuesday Cooking Demo and Food Styling with Delicious Eats. It's taking place on Tuesday, July 21st at noon. Details can be found on the Student Support Services website and link will be posted in the chat now. Thank you again, everyone. Um, this was great today. Thank you, Sarah. And we look forward to seeing you online on July 21st for our next event. Thanks for showing up, guys. Thanks. Take care, everyone. <laughs>